So good morning for lecture 2. So just we discuss about this, uh, how do you define this vision and mission and uh, I forgot to mention all about, for example, uh, we have to know the status of our vision, it, uh, what far away to achieve our vision. So the simple is we have to collect the, our graduates data, alumni data. For example, in our department we collected uh, starting for inception department of 2002 onwards. So, so this is the data we have 2002 for 2002 six batches, 2003, 4, okay and we we'll, uh, just will see this, their company name where they are working, okay then uh, to five batches, okay. So we will conduct the survey. First, of all, first thing is to get the data and second thing is we will collect the survey. Then we will achieve our vision mission. So it will take a long term goal. Okay. So this is the provision to achieve our vision of the department. Okay. So this already we uh, discuss. Now we got the statements P O 1, 2, 3. This depend upon so this primary correlation with our department vision mission. After defining this, uh, your department uh, vision, mission, and PUs, next step is you have to design the curriculum. Okay. So, to design the curriculum, before that one, we have to define the PS force. So, how to define the PS force? Again, the same process. Keep in mind the PO statements and also the POs defined by graduate attributes as per the Washington card. Okay, and uh, you see this my previous lecture about this the importance of Washington card, uh, why Taiwan is so important, uh, what are the domains of learning. Uh, please, you can, uh, if you have the time, if you refer my previous uh, videos also. Okay. So the specific outcomes will derive number one is keeping in mind the PO statement and also the P was given by Washington Accord. Okay. And the third step is considering the stakeholder feedback. So by taking the three inputs, we will define the PS force. After define the PS force, we can design a curriculum. Okay. So this curriculum also the inputs nothing but stakeholder or by default stakeholder. How do you involve the stakeholder to design the curriculum? And also you have to keep in mind that one the PS force and POs. Okay. Now after design this curriculum, and I will tell you one thing about uh, at department level, uh, we have the highest tradition body, uh, which is an uh, external body that is called BOS. Okay. So this is uh, the BOS is our highest external body in the department. Then after that one, we have a DAC. We have a DAC. If you have a two different programs, so we have a PAC, a MCC, and a CCC. Both are different. Okay, you have single UG program, you have only single PAC, MCC, CCC. But you have a two UG programs, you have one at single DAC and two different PAC. Okay, and the, the functions of this uh, committee we will discuss later. Okay, so how to achieve these PUs. So we had to discuss, define the department vision mission, then PU statements, then PSOs. Okay, then how do you assess? So generally, the PU assess by doing some survey. Okay. So there are two surveys are important here. One is uh, employee survey and alumni survey. So by conducting this survey, we will see that whether our PEOs are achieved or not, when 
after four to five years of graduation. Similarly, the PUs at the time of graduation, these are the capabilities and the abilities of these graduates. How means we have a direct that is CUs and indirect employee survey, student survey, and graduate survey or exit survey. Okay. Other important regarding employee survey, uh, most of the people confused for faculty. Employee survey, uh, there are actually there are two types of employee survey. One is we can take the employee survey at the time of graduation. Okay. So the industry people come to our campus to recruit our graduates. Then we will ask the employer about the assessment levels of our graduates P1 to P12 plus PS1, PS2. So that is one type of employer survey. Once the students joined in industry, so after four to five years of this graduation, then we will go to the industry and also we will ask the surveys, but the survey questions related to PEOs only. So this is also called employer survey. Okay, so at the time of graduation, we are taking employee survey, but the skill is related to the question we have to frame related to POs and POSOs. But after four to five graduation means we can take uh, the questionnaires related to the POs. That is called another employee survey. Okay, for example, a 2017 admitted batch. Then, when we will assess the PUs, PUs and PS word and COs. So during this uh, four years, we will assess the COs, first year, second year, third year, finally the semester wise. And at the time of graduation, 2021, we will assess POs, PSOs. After four to five years graduation, 26, 27 years, we will assess the POs. So this is a broader statement, it's a long term goal. And this is uh, the narrow statement. So this is about the assessment of PUs. But here I consider this one, this PUs, there are two types. One is the foreground domain outcomes related to your foreground core in the sense P1 to 5. Okay. And here the P1 to 5 generally that more number of courses are mapped to this POs. This is very important. We have non-domain that is PO6 to PO12 but very less number of courses are mapped. That's why that when you fix the target, keep in mind that one, the target, these PO6 generally it's somewhat uh, low um, compared to this PO1 to 5 because where a few courses are mapped so it's very difficult to get the attainment level so that's why the target when you fix and you know, based on the complexity uh, you will fix the target but somewhat these are the high targets and these are not low targets so these are POs okay but if you read at least three four times and uh, you will easily understand about uh, the POs. For example, apply this knowledge of what? Again, they divided. Apply the knowledge of mathematics, science, engineering science, and code. So, apply these knowledge to solve the complex engineering problems to solve the complex engineering problems. That is called, so the P1 generally is apply level. You can remember, it is a basic knowledge question, but it is apply level. And the second one, the P2 it's identify, formulate, review research literature, and analyze the complex engineering problem by using, is clearly mentioned by using 
the first principle of mathematics natural science same as a PO1 but the PO2 is somewhat level is higher than this PO1 it's analyze the problem problem analysis after the PO3 PO3 you have to develop or you have to design or you have to create a system by taking the consideration of public health, the safety and cultural issues also and environment condition. So you can apply and you can analyze and finally you can design and develop a system. After design, what you have to do? You will conduct the experiments and interpret the data and interpret the data. with valid conclusions. This is very important with valid conclusion. But you have to design the system with by using modern tools also that is called PO5. So most of the core courses, engineering courses will be applicable to this PO1 to PO5. This is general. So apply level, analyze level, design level, and these also but this practical experiment is also analysis but interpret the judgment evaluation this is called evaluation okay so these are supposed apply but in terms of modern tools these are about apply level but they have as modern tools the remaining po6 to po12 you can see this one po6 see this one this is apply level but apply the knowledge to assess and issues like what issues societal health safety legal and cultural issues in their professional engineering practice for example in our instrumentation uh, uh, we have to follow some standards some protocols for example to convert uh, any process variable, it's a mandatory as per the I2B standard, we had to convert into 4 to 20 milliamps. So that kind of practice, that kind of standard they have to follow while they design any system. That is PO6. And understand, this is a PO7 understanding level about the environment and sustainability. Again, PO8 apply level, apply in the sense they have to apply the ethical and moral values. And PO9, it is about the leadership qualities or the member whether has a effectively work or not, we have to observe and test. And PO10, the making documentation reports and he has a good communication skills. And PO11, it also demonstrates understanding level but about the management principles okay for example and a graduate will design the developed system the main important is low cost so the financial matter also it comes to the pictures so we have to verify these skills and finally whether he or she become a lifelong learner okay so he can do his own way without taking the faculty support that is kind of life and learning so this is called self-learning so this is about uh, the domain and non domain skills so we'll continue this uh, our next lecture